In the grand scheme of things, these metrics mean next to nothing and really don't serve as any strong indicator of your actual ability to build functional, useful software for real people. Welcome to the Goobar Podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. Here, we have short chats about things like software development and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of community, connection, and inspiration so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. Hey devs, today's episode is going to be kind of short and to the point, but I just really wanted to take a few minutes to chat about this because it's been on my mind and I keep getting reminded about it. And the topic of the day are developer scores. And more specifically, the potential problem with these kinds of scores and why I think it's really important to keep them in perspective. So what do I mean when I say developer scores? I mean things like Google's modern Android development score or Pluralsight's Android Associate Developer Assessment Score. If you don't know what these things are, uh, I will include links to them in the show notes. But basically, they are kind of an arbitrary score given to assess you know, how much you know about Android or, or how modern your Android project is. You know, what do these kinds of scores aim to do? Well, they're basically a gamification tool. You know, they're a rough metric for comparing your skills or your project to some standard that somebody out there has set. You know, these scores may or may not be meant to be compared directly to your peers or to other people's projects. On the surface, I don't think anyone means any harm by these kinds of things. I think for the most part, they are meant to be a rough measuring stick to guide learning, or maybe really just a simple way to drum up some marketing buzz, you know, something that gets people sharing their score, talking about their score, getting conversations going on social media and the such. Neither of these things is particularly harmful, though, on the surface. So I don't think there's necessarily anything malicious or, or at least outright malicious or anything here. And so before I dive any further, I just want to throw this kind of prerequisite disclaimer out there. I know that my opinion on this is not going to apply to everybody and that many people might think that this is no big deal. Maybe that I'm making a big deal out of this. Maybe that this, you know, takes the fun out of programming. I can totally see that arguments for a lot of people. I felt that way about this kind of thing until a few years ago. I can understand why many might feel that way. I just don't personally agree with it anymore. So why not? Why do I have an issue with these types of scores? And, and, and the reason with it is that I feel like these scores, even if they're not meant to be compared directly, it's not, or if it's not meant to be a competition, I think these scores inherently lead us to comparison, especially because of the fact that social media just leads us to that in general. And I think that the, the issue with this is that when we start comparing ourselves to each other, especially when using these somewhat arbitrary metrics, it sets us up for some bad things. So some people might start to game the systems to get a higher score so that they can share it around. They might think that it's going to give them some arbitrary bonus internet points, maybe some extra street cred. Maybe they think it's going to help them get a job. So they might start to undermine the score anyways, and and try and game the system, get their score up. So it makes it not that useful. It also makes it even less reliable to compare your scores to others. You know, other people might see scores, you know, if they see a high score, whether it's a real high score, whether it's a inflated high score, other people might think that and then automatically think that they are not skilled. They, in the case of the modern Android development score, you might see that score and think that because you aren't using every modern tool in your project, that your project is bad 
or that it's not modern enough or that you're not doing things the right way. Learners and new developers in particular are trained, I think, to think experience and, and your score is really closely tied to specific libraries and tools or to a specific learning path, which has the risk of narrowing in sort of the view of software development and kind of their career and skill set and stuff in general. So I think what I'm trying to say here in short is that these scores and the fact that they're set up to be shared and compared has the potential to discourage and harm the very people I think that are most likely to care about these scores and that are most likely to be harmed by this type of comparison. An industry vet of 20 years likely knows that any of these scores are very arbitrary and doesn't care about them anyways because they're comfortable in their skills. On the flip side, a brand new developer just starting out is likely looking for any kind of validation that they're on the right path, especially these days when we have less in-person interaction. I think there's probably less one-on-one -on -one mentorship going on. And so seeing some type of developer score speaks right to this need. It's a, it's a sense of potential validation, but it has none of the, the nuance as to what that score might actually mean. Um, what it means if your score is low, it doesn't have any of the guidance around how to keep it in perspective. And so I think that that leads to a lot of potential for, for discouragement, for harm of maybe um, focusing people in on uh, using only the newest and best libraries and not thinking critically about finding solutions that actually solve problems. I just think that it potentially moves new developers in a, a poor direction without that that sort of grounding presence of, of a mentor or a team to help um, sort of inform and, and keep the score in perspective. So I'm going to wrap this up there. Like I said, I just wanted to keep this short, you know, and I'll just say that, you know, let's take developer scores with a grain of salt. Let's try to keep them in perspective. You know, for you, if they're all fun and games, that's awesome. I, I encourage you to lean into them, have fun with it. I do think programming and software development should be fun. However, if you know scores and the comparison of scores sometimes stress you out, if you can, try to avoid becoming discouraged if you don't score high enough on the assessment of your pet project, um, or you know you don't score high enough on some you know, random quiz out there. In the grand scheme of things, these metrics mean next to nothing and really don't serve as any strong indicator of your actual ability to build functional, useful software for real people. If you enjoyed today's episode, leave a review and be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development and career. And remember, if you have a question or topic idea, I'd love to hear from you, and you can send those in to podcast at goobar.io for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs.